I'm just going to share my screen with you because in this workshop, we're going to go through a presentation that I prepared for you. And um, yeah, I'm just going to explain it as we go through the presentation. So let's do it. Okay, if everybody's seeing the um, presentation, please write it on the chat if is everything's okay. So we don't make any... Yeah. Okay, so um, let me also go to the presentation here. Yeah, today's workshop is about advertising in general. And um, the reason why I picked this workshop uh, and this title and this topic of advertising is because the subject of advertising and doing business startups, entrepreneurship and everything is one of the most important, in my opinion, the most important aspect for any business um, survival and growth and scaling. And if advertisement is done wrong, then there are a lot of bad consequences for the business. And especially if the business is a brand new business, then it causes a lot of problems. So this is a topic that I picked today um, so that we can go through some of the fundamentals. And hopefully um, today I am able to, you know, pass on some information that you never knew before. If, if I give you one useful information today in this workshop that I'm happy with it. If I give you more, then that's perfect. So before we get started, we are Startup Grind. We are the biggest entrepreneurship event organizer in the world. And uh, we have around 600 plus chapters uh, all around the globe in more than 125 countries. And um, we conduct our events with three values in our mind. First of all, we're here to help everybody um, before help helping ourselves. And we're here to give you first. Uh, we're not here to take anything and we're here to make friends and not connections. So anybody that wants to um, contact me later on to have a friendly conversation, go on and I'll share with you my email later. So this event, this event is sponsored by Sorx Media. Um, Sorx Media is a company, is an agency for you to grow and scale your business online. Um, they do media production, they do advertisements, they do marketing, they do um, growth strategies, and many more. So if you want to grow your business digitally, then they're the um, company to go to. Um, then we've got our partners, which are University of Nicosia's Career Center, uh, Career Success Center. We've got Google for startups, and uh, we've got Youth Makerspace um, in Larnaca, which if you're looking for, you know, creating something innovative for free, go check them out. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to quickly close the screen share just to make sure that everything's okay in the chat. Um, all good, all good. Okay, I'm gonna bring the screen back because I just want because I couldn't see the chat. <laughs> um, okay, so we're back here. Um, today, the events, the workshop is gonna be conducted by myself. My name is Hesad Nani. I'm the chapter director of Startup Grind Cyprus, and um. You've got my email right here and my website if you want to check it out and contact me personally. I um, I'll gladly, you know, start a conversation with you if you need anything. So my website is hesadnani.com and my email is hello at hesadnani.com. And um, oh, how do we jump to the end? Uh, interesting. Uh, one moment, please. Okay. Sorry about that. It was a little glitch I had. Um, let's let's bring that up.
technology. It's uh, it's difficult doing single-handed here, but just give me one moment to make sure everything's okay. And we are good. So what are we going to cover today? I made a list of the topics that we're going to cover today. Um, first of all, we're going to understand the differences between uh, advertising, marketing, and public relations. Um, then we're going to find out the only purpose of advertising and no more. So something that a lot of people get confused. We're going to talk about the fundamentals of advertising. Then we're going to talk about some strategies and funnels, some what are funnels and stuff. We're going to talk. We're going to be talking about offers, advertising offers, test campaigns, analytics, and we're going to. I'm going to tell you what to do next at the end of the um, presentation. So, how are we going to conduct this workshop? This is an interactive workshop, right? So the best way of learning anything is by live examples and. Um, I'll be asking about your product or service to make examples from. So let's say if I talk about a subject, then if I want to give an example, then I'll say it and you can write it in the chat and um, or come on stage to talk about it. And I can gladly um, give that example, your company as an example for the subject that we're talking about. And yeah, so you can come on stage or you can write it on chat and both works. Um, if you have any questions at any time of um, the workshop, just go ahead and write it on chat and we're going to take care of it. Uh, we've got no rules, just we're going to do how, uh, just do what feels right. Yeah. And yes, there will be a lot of memes and GIFs. I hope that um, this time you can see the GIFs on the screen because last time it was laggy and people couldn't see them. But anyway. So let's get started. Um, the first part of our workshop is about differences between marketing, advertising, and public relations. So just quickly go to get into what marketing is. Basically, marketing is the is the umbrella that holds advertising, par, mar, uh, public relations, brand awareness, brand identity, everything. So uh, uh, marketing is the um, umbrella for everything, and it's the idea. Um, creating, aligning an idea with a market. So if you have a service, if you have a product, then marketing it is basically introducing it to the market and um, finding a customer for it and aligning it. So it has a lot of research and analysis on the promotional offers. Um, and uh, these researches are done either on customers, on prices, on places, on promotions. So there's a big study behind everything that goes on with the promotional content of any business. So the next we have public relations. Basically, public relations is part of marketing and um, is basically creating a public image, a brand image for your business. Um, and um, it, 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 has, it, it targets various audiences. Uh, not just your customers, it can be your uh, employees, it can be the media outlet. So it's not only limited to your uh, prospects and it's, or it's mostly organic. So whatever you do, it, it's not paid. It's not a paid um, marketing approach. It's organic. is is mostly how people perceive your brand, how uh, people talk about your brand and, you know, um, just the public image of your brand. So what is advertising? This today is about advertising. So advertising, again, is a component of marketing. Um, basically, is a, is a process that you take your product or service that you're doing in your business and you get it in front of your audience, right? You create campaigns and strategies to sell that service or product to your audience. And these strategies are, these strategies and execution are advertising. And um, basically, uh, most of the advertising, not most, maybe all of it is usually paid. So it's basically um, spending a budget on advertising to, uh, um, let's say, get a higher return on your investment. So whatever budget you put in your advertisement, at the end of the day, within a time frame, it needs to be profitable or basically it's done wrong. So 
Um, there are consequences if advertising is done wrong, first of all, and the biggest of all is you waste a lot of money because advertising is very, very expensive and um, it needs to be carefully planned and executed. Um, basically, with a wrong advertisement, you lose trust of your customer. Um, either you send the wrong message or you show your brand in a wrong image that you lose your, you lose customers trust. And, um, if advertisement are done wrong and the, the targeting of your audience is done wrong, let's say if your product is made for, um, married couples, and then you don't, you do your advertisement in a bad, um, let's say strategy that targets single people, then you completely are targeting wrong people and you are getting some, you know, not relatable, um, audience. Again, as I said before, it destroys your brand image if it's done wrong because you are um, going into the public, going in front of your customers with a force, with a force of a budget. And if it's done wrong, then you're just going to ruin your name, basically. And if advertisements are done wrong, then you create false expectation. If you over-exaggerate the quality of your, uh, let's say, product or service, or if, if you show if you tell people the wrong features or wrong benefits of your products then you create a false expectation which can make a lot of people angry and that happens to your company a nuclear bomb right in the middle of your company if the advertisement are done wrong so next we're going to talk about the only purpose of advertising and it's going to be very short and quick sales yeah, big sales. A lot of people, okay, sales could be also conversions of a kind, but advertisements are done at the end of the day for sales. You're putting a budget into your campaigns so that you can make sales, make profit. You can get back your budget that you allocated and also make profit on top of that, okay? So the main goal of advertisement is sales. It's not about impressing people is not about brand image or awareness is not about um let's say finding people that are excited about your brand and all that it's only for sales the end result of your advertisements has to be sales yes there could be ways and paths in the middle um that are not aligned for sales but the end result of any strategies you do in advertisements need to need, need to lead to um sales and it's all about dollars dollar bills yeah <laughs> so when we if we get scientific about sales it means return on your investment roi and basically, it's very, very simple. I don't know why many people get it wrong when they're doing advertisement, and, I, and it's so simple. It's basically, if you add up your cost of goods plus shipping, if your company is paying for shipping, and plus the money that you spend on your advertisements, it needs to be smaller than your total purchases, right? If the amount you're spending on the left side is bigger than your purchases, then you're not making profit. And if that happens for a long term, then you're losing money. Yes, there could be scenarios at the beginning that you are creating test campaigns to understand your market more. And you are, let's say, um, risking some budget for a bigger reward in the future. But that is only temporary. You need to get back to this formula and make sure that everything stays positive. And this is, you know, I really get geeky about this because a um, lot of strategies that I see out there are just, you know, not making sense in um, numbers. Right. So let's talk about fundamentals of advertising. I'm going to, I'm going to stop the sharing and just check if anyone has a question, um, please write it so far. Um, any comments, anything? I just closed it to just see what's happening with the chat. And I see around 14 people joining. That's awesome. So if you, again, I'm reminding you, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you think that I'm talking about the wrong concept, write it in the chat so we can have a discussion, right? I'm just going to count to five to see if anyone has any questions.
Right. Let's back to it again. Um, okay. So the first thing I want to talk about when we're talking about advertisements um, is that you need to be a salesperson. You, sorry, you need to see your advertising campaign as a salesperson, right? If you think of a concept of advertising before any um, digital or print or anything, it was a person selling to another person. That was advertising before the sales. Person had a product, it would go door to door and try to sell that product. And it was a speech going on. It was some convincing and selling, right? Nothing has changed technology and print and everything, the concept is the fundamental of that is still the same, okay? So you need to treat your advertising as a salesperson still, even if you're doing it on Facebook, on Instagram, or if you're doing a billboard or a, or a sales uh, leaflet sending to your um, mail or something, that you need to treat it as a salesperson and I tell you why. So first of all, a good salesperson um, expresses herself briefly and clearly. So your advertisement needs to be brief and clear, just like a salesperson. Um, a salesperson is good at convincing and selling and not necessarily as, uh, at speech making. So you don't need to be a good speech maker to be a good advertiser. You just need to be a convincing and selling. And in order to be convincing, first of all, you need to know your customer so well and their needs, and you need to listen to your customers to see what they are going through, right? And then convince them that your product or your service is the way to go for them, is, is the solution to their problem. Um, so you, you always have to compare uh, your campaigns with, uh, as a salesperson. Right. If let's say I give you an ex another example here that um, if you're choosing to use a photo on, let's give an example of Facebook. If you want to advertise on Facebook and you want to put a photo as in your advertisement, um, imagine dressing up your salesperson to go door to door. Right. You wouldn't dress up someone so flashy with bright colors and all that and put them in front of people because that would, first of all, look weird and suspicious and too bold. Right. So that same concept goes with the creative, the photo or the video that you're using. I see out there sometimes some videos that are so weird just to grab attention. Right. That it loses the whole point of the advertisement, it loses my trust or it loses um, the image that I had about them in my head just because they want to grab my attention. That doesn't mean that they create the advertisement so bold. So just think of it, everything as a salesperson. And yeah, I talked about it. Design your campaigns as if you're doing a face-to-face -face with your prospect. Let's say if the messages that you want to put in your advertisement, it needs to be similar to the messages that you would use if you were selling face-to-face. -face. I'm emphasizing on this slide, slide because this is one of the biggest fundamentals of advertising, okay? To treat um, the campaigns as a salesperson. And when you're creating your advertising strategies and campaign and messages and photos and everything, you need to focus that on creating it for an individual, not a mass. You're not creating a campaign um, that targets a big group of people. You're creating a campaign that targets people personally, right? Maybe have the tone of the voice one-to-one, -one, right? And yeah, we've got our little salesperson going on here. <laughs> Okay, the next fundamental I wanna talk about is to be specific, narrowed, and relatable. Um, basically, in general, not only in advertisement, if you're too generalized, if you're too general, then you leave no impressions, right? You need to be specific. You need to choose a side, um, pick a side to be on, right? You need to be in a way that you're not taking it too safe and sabotaging leaving no impressions, right? You need to take a side. You're going to have people that like you a lot and you're going to have people that hate you, maybe. 
And the reason, be- the reason on that is when you become specific, first of all, yes, you leave impressions. And second of all, um, being a specific psychologically means you're either telling a truth and or a lie, okay? And usually in the advertisements, advertisements world, people perceive advertising, um, sorry, advertisement ads to be truthful because they're out there, they're in the public, they're stating a fact publicly. So that means automatically that should be true or otherwise the, the company wouldn't take that risk to lie on their advertisements. Um, so I give you an example here. Let's say, um, let's say if you're advertising for, uh, an, for an LED light bulb, okay? And um, you wanna sell it to an audience that already have normal light bulbs, right? So instead of going to them and say the, the LED light bulbs are brighter and they save more energy, you need to go more specific on that. You need to change your message to these LED bulbs um, are 25% brighter and they save 50 to 60% of your consumption um, compared to a normal light bulb, let's say. Okay, so as soon as you bring statistics and numbers, then they become facts. They become more truthful. So people trust that advertisement more. The next thing you got to do is to narrow down your audience to a certain class of people. I see this mistake a lot out there, and that is to go for a very general audience, targeting a general audience too broad of an audience for their advertisement. You need to pick a class of people, right? The reason is that the more narrow you make your audience, the more you will relate to them later. Because first of all, you will understand them more. You will talk their language. You will know what their needs are because they're very specific small groups. And then they trust you more because they will relate to you more as well. I give you an example. Let's say if you have a product that you want, you're selling to women, okay? And you do your research and you start narrowing down. An example of a narrowed down audience is single moms traveling overseas. That is a a narrowed down audience. First of all, single, that is your, um, let's say, marital status. Mom, that means parent and female traveling that is an activity they do overseas that means they're not traveling in uh, locally they're traveling internationally all right that is a very targeted um audience and let's say if you are single mom what do single moms traveling overseas need um let's say if they want to carry their baby and move around a lot overseas and also be safe because it's overseas If you have a product in that category, then you target these people and there are more chances for them to buy from your brand. Yeah, and another benefit that it has is the more targeted you go, you get cleaner data and easier analytics, right? Because let's say if you pick um, three personas, three audiences that you want to check and you're very targeted, okay? As soon as you test your campaigns, because they're targeted, there's no doubt in here, okay? If one demographic doesn't work, then you definitely know, let's say, for example, single moms traveling overseas does not work, okay? So it gives you a clean data and an easier analytics to make decisions later on what to do with it, okay? And also it helps you to, as I said before, to know your audience better, their needs, their language, Um, yeah. And again, as I mentioned before, they relate to you more. They they feel that your products, it belongs to them because your advertising messaging is for them. Your product images are made for them. Your headlines are made for them. Your videos are made for them. Let's say in the photo is showing a single mom with a baby traveling, let's say in Mexico, let's say, okay? When they see that, they relate to it. I don't know why I picked this example, but I think it's pretty clear. So yeah, 
they feel that the product is for them, mine. <laughs> I'm just going to stop sharing to see uh, what's going on in the chat. Um, so any questions so far? Does everything make sense? How's everything going? Write in the chat. If you, if you want to come and give an example of your company and how you can narrow down your audience, go ahead, write in the chat or come on stage if you want to. Um, the, um, Kevin, the, um, um, the, 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 the PowerPoint is going to be shared later on, uh, on, on our webpage. So don't worry about it. You're going to have all that later as well, unless if I say something extra and the recording, so you don't need to take notes. They're going to be recording and I'm going to make the recording available on the same URL that you found this event. I um, mean, a couple of days. Behrouz, Pasfalis, what is the timing needed to be able to to narrow down your audience, timing needed. Um, basically, I, I'm not sure, Pascalis, what you mean by this question, but um, whenever you're creating a strategy, that's when you narrow down your audience. So it's done right at the beginning, right? And all your test campaigns and all that are done using narrowed audience. The thing is, the fundamentals that I'm talking about right now uh, you never want to make the mistakes. <laughs> you never want to be generalized um, when you're picking your audience, right? You want to be narrowed down. Is that, does that answer your question or is it something else? Well, I'll come back to the chat and I can see your answer later. So I'm going to share the screen again to, um, to continue where we left off. And okay. So the next fundamental, and again, one of the very, very important, these fundamental uh, fundamentals of advertising that I picked today are very important. That's why I picked them. There are so many of them out there, but the, the few that I selected today and um, this part that I'm focusing more, these are like crucial. If, if they're done wrong, then the whole campaign will collapse um, and there will be a lot of money wasted. So we're going to talk about why talking about benefits in your advertisements is much more important than talking about your features. First of all, you need to understand whenever you know, going through advertisements is that people make purchasing decisions emotionally. They never do it logically. They, they think they do it logically, but they always do it emotionally. Everything that people buy are emotionally purchased. Just one second. Let me uh, take my cat outside because she's mewing. Just give me one moment. Sorry about that. <laughs> she really wanted to go outside. Okay, where was I? Yeah, so all the decisions are made emotionally, right? And where's my mouse? Basically, people don't care about what, does, what your product does or your service does, okay? They care about what kind of benefits um, your product or service has for them. So if you anchor that idea in your head, that whenever you're doing your advertisement, you talk about benefits to your customers or your potential customers rather than features, then you will create your advertisement twice or triple more effective um, than talking about just features. And this mistake, it happens a lot and a lot and a lot. Just people, when they're advertising their product or service, they just talk about features, features. This product does this, this product does that. This service, we do this, we do that. No. I'll give you an example. When Apple 
um, when Steve Jobs created, Apple created their iPod, instead of them saying our iPod's storage um, is for one gigabyte of MP3s or music, which is a feature, they said thousand songs in your pocket. Now that is a benefit to be able to carry thousand songs just right in your pocket, that is a benefit. People don't care how much storage or how many songs, uh, sorry, how, what kind of songs, what format is this device can carry. They care about what this device can do for them. There's another example. Let's say if you're selling umbrellas in your advertisements, you don't talk about the feature. You don't say that oh, our umbrellas is made out of this and the handle is made out of wood or is unbreakable, is this or that. You want to talk about the benefits your umbrella can do for your customer. I mean, this is really simplified uh, to sell umbrellas. People don't really make purchasing decisions anymore for umbrellas, but it's a simplified example. So umbrellas, the benefit for using an umbrella is not to get wet or not to get burned by the sun. That is the benefit. So you have to create your campaigns around this idea rather than the features. Okay. Um, strategies and funnels. Right. First and most important thing about designing strategies is to know your audience. That is... Um, the most important things. And he has a lot of branches of understanding your audience. And this is too generalized. Okay. So what I usually, what we do internally through our company, when we design our um, marketing campaigns is that we divide, sorry about that. We divide the potential audiences that we're going to target into four categories, cold, warm, hot, and customers right? And I'm just going to talk, I'm going to just going to say what they are really quick. And I'm going to talk to you about how we find each of them, right? So a cold audience is, is an audience that does not know your product, does not know the solution to the problem you're trying to solve, and they don't know the problem neither. So they don't know that they have a certain problem that your product is solving. That is a cold audience. So for that audience, if you want to target them, which is harder and takes longer, is that you need to educate them first that they have a certain problem and then introduce your solution. So that is for your cold audience. Your warm audience, they know that they have the problem, but they don't know the solution, right? Your hot audience is they know the problem, they know, your, they know the solution to the problem and they might even know your brand. That is a hot, um, let's say, audience right there. And the customer, obviously, um, is it's someone that you already sold. Uh, is your either current or future predicted that you might have. So whenever you want to understand your customers and where they stand in this um, diagram, you got to start with, the right side, your customers. Either you already have customers or you didn't study that how your potential customer, how your customer will be like um, in the future, right? So you start with that demographic and then slowly, slowly you work your way um, back to the left side all the way to the cold. There are um, products or services that they might not have let's say a warm audience or they might not have cold audience. I give you an example. Let's say if you're selling clothes, just a fashionable clothes, there are no cold audience for, for that. There's only warm and hot, okay? Um, your cold audience would be, only chance that your cold audience would be there would be that maybe the gender to your clothing is different, right? Or I don't know, if you're selling some, Cloth very special clothing that is not out there. But if you just, let's say, selling yoga pants to female demographics, then you don't have cold audience. You only have warm and hot because they already know what yoga pants are, what they do, where they're useful, blah, 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 right? 
So you just have to convince them that your brand does the best, makes the best yoga pants, right? To move them from warm to hot. So it depends on your idea, your product. Um, but this is for the general picture for everything. So you work, you work your way from your customers. You find out what hot means, hot customers, hot, let's say, sorry, prospects are. So if your customers are, um, you already sold, let's say, um, I'm trying to find an example. Smartphones, let's go back a bit. 10 years ago, smartphones, or 10, 15 years ago when iPhone came out. Let's, let's start with that, okay? So your customer is someone geeky or someone that bought the device and is already using it and loving it, okay? Your hot audience is the one that knows about smartphones, okay? And is looking and comparing different smartphones, maybe back there, back then was Blackberry, Blackberry, Blueberry, Blackberry, I think. Um, and is comparing iPhone with that or Microsoft uh, handhelds before that was there. So that is your hot one. Your warm audience is the ones that um, they have a phone, but they don't know what smartphones are and what they can do for them. And the cold audience are the, um, the, uh, the market laggers that don't even use a phone or they use such an old phone that they don't really care about the phone, okay? And you create different campaigns for them, as I said and wrote at the bottom. So you have campaign one, two, three, four. That doesn't mean that you only focus on one customer. You can focus on all of them, but you have to separate the campaigns. You can use the same campaign for your hot leads, hot audience, and use that same one for your cold. I give you, you'll see an example later on as well. Um, funnels are very similar to what I just talked about, right? So the funnels, imagine that you're passing your customer from top of your funnel all the way to the bottom. And the higher you are, the colder your customer is, right? So we have TOFU means um, top of the funnel. We've got middle of the funnel, and then we've got bottom of the funnel, the three parts, right? The top of the funnel are your cold audience, the middle are your warm ones, and then the bottom of the funnel are your um, hot audience ready to be close to become clients, right? Um, so there are, uh, you can check this out later on with there are techniques that there are campaigns and techniques that you use at each stage of the funnel when you're applying for um, advertising. Um, before I get to this example, I'm going to stop the screen share, check out if there are questions. I hope that you're, you're having, um, I hope that is useful so far for you. Joseph says, should advertisement campaign need to be nonstop or continuous or should they interrupt it at a certain time duration, let's say online shops, meaning social media methods. Okay. Um, so Joseph is asking, should the campaigns be continuous or should it be within a timeline? That, they can be both, okay? So let's say I give you an example. If Black Friday is coming up and you're deciding to boost your product sales with some advertisement campaigns, then in that scenario, that black market a week before and after is your time frame. So you do your black market, um, uh, let's say advertisements, and then you finish it, right? It also can be continuous. Let's say... Um, uh, we do we do drop shipping business, which is very close, very similar to e-commerce. And if we manage to create, um, let's say, a campaign that is profitable, so as much as the campaign runs, the profit we make out of the budget that we put is more. Then why would you stop it? <laughs> and yeah, most of the stuff that we do is social media, so. Um, don't forget to write your questions. I'm going back to the slides, write it. And next time I get out of it, um, I'll talk about it. Also, if you have a company, if you have a product, if you have a service that I want, that, that you want me to relate to the, to the information that I'm giving you, write down about your product or service and I'll take that product or service of yours and then I will relate it to the content that I'm um, talking about. So. Or just write, just write your what you're doing there 
um, on chat what your business is. And whenever I, I pick an example or pick your business, that can work as well. So back to the screen. Okay, so we talked about funnels. I give you an, a, a live example of what funnels are. I'm going, to I'm going to start from top left, which is the TOF, top of the funnel. Let's say if you're running Facebook ads uh, for your cold audience, the first thing you want to do for cold audience is that you want to capture the contact information. That could be an email, that could be a phone number, that could be a cookie, that anything, because you want to find them later. A cold audience, which are not captured, they will never become warm audience. So your main goal of cold audience is capture leads, capture information, all right? And in this funnel, if you go to the right side, opt-in page is actually a page that captures contact information. Yes, if they manage if they are more interested, which is rarely happens at that part of the funnel, they will go to the sales page, they will go to a qualifying page, they will book a call with you, and they will purchase and go to the thank you page. But that rarely happens for the cold audience. So what we do here is we retarget them. We, are, we either contact them through email, phone, retarget them through um, cookies and all that, and then we go to the middle of the funnel because they already interacted with your um, page, you already read about the problem that you're talking about and you're trying to, your product solves. So they are aware of what's going on. So you go in the middle of the funnel, you don't need the opt-in page here anymore. You just go through, go straight to the sales page and again, qualifying, book a call, whatever. If they don't close, if they don't, um, let's say buy your product, then you label them again that they went to your sales page and they become a hot lead and you target them with your third campaign, which takes them directly to a qualifying page because they already know what your product is. They already know what solution they're solving. Um, so you just directly take them to that part. And what you can do sometimes, you can add an extra, um, let's say discount or an extra push for the bottom of your funnel people to close. Okay, they interacted with your brand three times. They know who you are. They know your product. They're familiar. They're just doubting. They, they, they think they're overthinking to buy your product. So what you do is just you throw one deal and you get them hooked. Okay. Uh, there's another example here of what kind of tones we use for different part of the funnel. So this example is about Code Academy and Code Academy is basically learning how to code. And this specific campaign is about um, their, uh, let's say courses for kids, right? And they're targeting their parents. So top of the funnel are the parents that don't even know why their kids need to be programmers and how it fix their future. So you kind of educate them. I'm just gonna read the title, uh, the headline here. It says, is your child's education giving them the best chance in life? So you see, it's very generalized. They get curious because they relate to that. They don't know what coding is. They don't know what programming is, okay? So they get in there, they educate them that your kid's future will change by teaching them how to code, how to program on a computer software. Okay, so they move them through the middle um, of the funnel. The middle of the funnel, if you read the headline, it says coding for four to seven years old, build an app in under a month. So you're already talking about your solution. It's not about problems or it's not about the opportunity anymore. It's about your product, right? And it doesn't matter if people don't purchase with these ads because you just want to push them to the bottom of the, your funnel. So the bottom of the funnel on the right side, it says, Code Academy, sign up today, get 20% off. It's not for people that don't know what Code Academy is. Bottom of the funnel already interacted with that brand three or four times, so they know what Code Academy is. They just need this 20% off to close, right? Is the last push. So this is bottom of the funnel. Yeah. Calm down and breathe. <laughs> this is advertisement. For advertisement, if you overcomplicate things, um, you lose it, okay? So these concepts that I told you about, these are 
the base, the fundamentals, you should not complicate this stuff. All right. It's already a bit complicated. It's already a lot of different campaigns for different people. And the starting point shouldn't be focusing on funnels. It should be just testing and testing and testing. So do not overcomplicate this. Um, these are the concept for uh, a successful, uh, mature advertising campaigns. Could be used at the beginning as well, but yeah. The last thing I want to talk about is about tracking and retargeting. Um, the only way that you can pass people through funnels and the only way that funnels can be effective is if you have right tracking um, and retargeting used. If, as I said before, if you lose a prospect at top of the funnel and you don't have any contact information or any cookies to go and find them again, then they're lost. The next time they find you again, they're going to be cold lead. And again, if they're going to be cold lead, they never go down your, um, through your, through your sales funnel. If you are not tracking or retargeting. Okay. I give you an example. Tracking examples could be email opt-ins, phone opt-ins, mailing address, browser cookies, website activities. You track them, you label them, you mark them as what they've done. And then you create another strategy for them in the middle of your funnel at the bottom of your funnel right? That is why when you go to a supermarket and they have loyalty cards and all that, yes, they give discounts for returning customers, but the main goal of loyalty cards are your contact information. <laughs> so basically that is a way for them to bring you within their funnel so that they can retarget you later on in the old traditional way, um, let's say, or send you a leaflet to your, um, the, to your mailbox. And the thing that is happening out there a lot and is a big issue is, is a lot of people are tracking and retargeting unethically. Our concept within our company is to track and target ethically, always follow um, the rules, give people the notice that you're tracking them, gain their trust, say, hey, I'm putting a cookie on your computer so I can find you later, right? Let them know, follow the GDPR rules. Have, have the opt out option accessible, meaning that as soon as they wanna get out of your funnel, make it accessible, don't hide it from them, right? Don't steal or sell personal data. If you work ethically, then your results will be ethically as well, then you know, you're going to be more successful because you will attract people that want to be in your funnel. That is important. You want to tr attract customers that want to be in your funnel. You cannot forcefully keep people in your funnel. So yeah, track people ethically. I'm going to stop the sharing, see what's going on in the chat. Okay. So Kevin says my pro product is premium natural hair hair care product for women of color. Okay. So you already, as we talked about, you already um, narrowed down your audience. So you have women of color. Okay. Maybe add a location to it as well to be more narrowed down because women of color act differently in different locations, right? They act differently in Africa than US, than UK, than Australia, right? So you want to target that more into a, a, down to a location. And um, let's say your funnel could be, your top of the funnel would be, um, if you have any specific product that can actually help um, uh, the hair of, let's say women of color, um, the top of the funnel are the women that don't know that these products exist um, and they don't know that they need it. Your middle of the funnel are the women that they've heard it. They know it's going to help, but they never look into the solution. So they never researched about the product. And your hot leads are the ones that actually found some other brands or maybe your brand. And um, yeah, they're looking into buy one. And if you get at the right time in the right place in front of them, they will purchase from your product because they're looking for it. So first... For your cold leads, you need to educate them why they, what problems 
they have or what opportunities they can use. Middle of the funnel, introduce your product. Um, bottom of the funnel, go ahead and try to sell them. Behru said, I help, tell, I help take entrepreneurs who have come across a personal health challenge and feel the urge to pivot and create product or service that help others facing the same challenge, particularly help entrepreneurs without prior health or medical expertise. So Behrouz, it's good that I know you from before and what you do so I can relate to you. Um, your top of the funnel, of course, are entrepreneurs that have never heard of mental problems through entrepreneurs entrepreneurship okay so the top of the funnels are like did you know that as you know 90 80 70 percent of entrepreneurs go through these medical problems or health problems right and then maybe you get them to an article or a video or something but you have to tag them that they watched it or they read it and um let's say middle of the funnel uh could be your first interaction as in like you know Solution to that, if you have that problem, is this, 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 this. Again, track them. Bottom of the funnel is saying, um, here's the solution. Here's my solution to that. Yeah. Um, there are, in this presentation, I, in this workshop, I didn't include it. But there are ways to create offer ladders as well. Maybe I say it really quick when we get to the offers. Yeah, we are at the offers. So. Forming your offer. I'll talk about the offer ladder later on. Um, your product and service offer. So the best advertisement doesn't ask people to buy. It just offers a solution and benefits and says, if you want this solution or benefit, then pay for it. <laughs> so you don't go out there and say, um, buy my product, buy here, buy, I've got this, buy, this is this much, buy it. You don't go that approach. You say, you state the problem, you state the opportunity, you state your benefits and solutions to the customers, and then you leave them be. If they want that solution, they will buy it from you. <laughs> you need to uh, make it accessible for them to easily buy it, but you shouldn't emphasize on buying. Um, the offers that you make, this is another big um mistake that a lot of advertisers do is that um, they create offers around their product. It's very similar to um, when I talked about benefits. Uh, did I share the? Oh, I didn't share the screen. Sorry. <laughs> uh, let me share the screen. Okay, there we go. I didn't share the screen. Sorry about that. So it's very related to the section that I talked about. Um, benefits are more important than features. It's the same concept. You cannot create offers around what your product is. You need to create offers around your customer, your audience, their needs, their questions, the benefits you're gonna give them, right? It's all about your audience. So it's, you have to take that focus away from your product and bring it back to your audience. That's what you should be doing. Um, the reason why is that the offers needs to be emotionally relatable to your audience. So your audience needs to be emotionally, they need to emotionally relate to that offer, right? If you're, if you're advertising to single moms traveling overseas, then you need to understand their emotion. Maybe they, they're a little bit fearful because they're alone with a baby, right? So you create your offer that targets that emotion and gives a solution to that gives them a little bit of, uh, let's say, assurance or a little bit of security when they're traveling, okay? It could be, it could be a, a bag. It could be a bag, basically. It could be a, a bag that is, you know, locks on your body and no one can steal it. I'm just making things up. But your offer is not about, oh, this bag is, it has double locks and ultra secure this and that. No, it's just about making the single mom traveling abroad feeling safe. That is your offer. And with every offer comes a great hook that I told you. So when you have the offer, when they grab you, when you grab their attention, when you, uh, when they want your product, then with the correct hook, meaning maybe 20% discount, maybe free shipping, 
maybe this or that, you can close them. So you grab their attention and interest with your offer. They're interested to buy from you. They're not sure yet. Then there comes the hook. You take the customer. <laughs> so um, this table is an example of many things that I talked about, about audiences, solutions, problems, hook product, everything. Okay. So when we're designing our advertisement, we use a very similar table as how you see on the screen. So if you see at the top, um, we, let's say if we are selling skateboard with a custom design alloy wheel, that is our product. If that is the product, then on the top, we have three, we, let's say we pick three audiences. Maybe we want to sell the skateboard to the surfers. Maybe we want to sell the skates to the new skaters or existing skaters. Each of these audiences need to have different offers. So that goes back to the point that I said, you don't create offers around your product, you create it around your audience. And each of these audiences that you see here, the surfer, the new skater and the existing skater, they need to have different offers in order for them to relate to you more. Okay, so first of all, you got to find out what their problems are or their opportunity or their feeling in the pro uh, we have this row that says problem. So a surfer, um, what they like is inner peace, well-being, a new skater. What they want is to, to appear more cool in the new crowd, make create an identity, a sense of identity and existing skaters. They're looking for. Um, again, sense of identity and want something different or more professional. They're already in the market, so they want something better, okay? Um, if you have that in your head, and if you go to the solution section, there are two parts, top and bottom. Top are the existing solutions out there, and the bottom are the ones that you offer. Is your offer the bottom one, okay? So yes, there are always other sports for the surfer, because you're targeting surfers, not the skaters. Surfers can pick skateboarding, they can pick rollerblading, they can pick um, uh, snow, uh, let's say skiing. So one of your challenges, one of your competi competition is other sports or other skateboard brands. For new skaters, other skateboard brands, other activity steals because, because they can switch to something else. They haven't um, dedicated their time yet. And for the existing skaters, it's um, other brands. So the surfer wants access flow state on land. Oh, sorry, that the offer you can give to a surfer is access the flow state on land. So you can tell the surfer exactly the feeling that you have while surfing, we can provide that to you on land. That is nothing related to the product. It's all about the offer that emotionally connects to your audience. They're gonna go like, okay, I wanna feel that flow state on land. There you go use our skateboard. And then when you have them, when you have their interest, then you talk about your alloy wheels or custom designs and all that. For the new skaters we have here, be part of the in crowd. Don't look like the rookie in the park. That is their emotion. When they start skateboarding, because they don't know anything, they go to the skate park and they see everybody so professional and they feel left out, right? So you want to target that. And you say, okay, if you use this custom design, cool skates, you fit in, right? With these existing skaters, you can say, be unique. They're already in the market. They're already in the crowd. They're already doing what they're doing, okay? So you just tell them, be unique, be different than other people, you know? Just like your, uh, your moves boosting rights of top boards. So it says, just like your moves that are awesome, make your skateboard awesome as well. And then the hooks at the bottom, you see free shipping, money back guarantee. So these are when they're already interested in your offer. Then you show them these items. You say, okay, also we have free shipping. Also we have money back guarantee. <laughs> right. I'm going to check the chat really quick and check the time. We're eight. Got another 20 minutes. I have to go. I think it was interesting. Yep. Yeah, Constantina, Tina, nice 
having you there. Um, questions, anybody? Because I'm going to quickly go back to the presentation, not to. Please have your questions on the chat and um, I will go through them. Okay, your tone and lingo. That's another important part of it to relate more to the, your audience, okay? When you're doing audience research, you need to understand their tone of voice and their lingo as well, okay? Let's say if you're talking to a, a, a surfer, you need to know what the language they talk about, the tone, the lingo, so you can relate to them. If you talk to them like a lawyer, if you talk like a lawyer to a surfer, it doesn't work. They don't relate to you. They don't trust you, right? So what you need to do, you need to create and build a lingo library for each of your audiences, each of them, not all of them, each of them each of the ones that you pick. So what you can do and we do sometimes is we browse Reddit, we browse Quora, we browse Amazon, we, do, we, do, we give out uh, surveys to ideal customers or existing customers to just understand how they talk. I show you a really um, quick trick after that you can use, it's very useful. Um, so we, you need to learn how they describe themselves and their problems, the language they use to describe themselves and their problems. So this on the screen, what you see right now is a research that we've done for the books on Amazon. And let's say if we have a customer that is selling um, a golf uh, clubs, let's say golf equipment. We go on Amazon, we search about golf, we find books that are related to golf, and then we read the description of that. So on the description, it says, lower your average score by five shots in, the se in this season with minimal efforts. As someone that doesn't play golf, I have no idea what that is <laughs> to score five shots this season. I don't know if that's important for someone or not. Okay, or it says on the yellow, it says sink more putts of eight feet or less while consistently lagging long, long putts. To be honest, I have no idea what that means, <laughs> right? But a golfer knows that. And if you talk this language, if you research about what it means here and then put that in front of them, they know that these advertisements were made for golfers, right? Or we have other examples it says increase club head speed, ball speed, smash factor. Like these are words that golfers use. So you need to be used, you need to be using them um, in your offers. And when creating an offer, there are different components of the offer. You've got the headline, you've got creative, you've got copy, and you've got call to action, which you create per offer, per offer, per audience. Uh, I emphasize on that because a lot of people mistake this. A lot of people create one campaign for everybody. No, that's not it. You need to narrow down your customers and audiences into subsections, create different offers for different audiences, and then um, different headlines, different creatives for each offer. And within each offer, you can test different two, three headlines or copies or creative, okay? So a purpose of a headline is to pick out your audience from a crowd. So a headline is a big, bold word that people see first. And the job of a headline is to grab the attention of the people that you're looking for. Oops. Um, the purpose of a creative, AKA the images, the videos, any, any creative that you use is to form a better selling argument. Um, I think I have the, yeah. The purpose of a creative is not to make the ad interesting or attract attention or to decorate an ad or to please or to amuse people. Lot, this is another big mistake a lot of advertisers do. They use photos and images to grab attention or to like decorate their advertisement. You see it in magazines and stuff, not the professional ones, but like most of the ads out there for small businesses that you see in magazines and social medias and Facebook and Instagram. They're made around that. The purpose of the creative is to give an extra information about your offer quickly and visually. That's all it is. Sometimes people use, you know, letters and writings on their uh, creative. And yeah, it's just that. It's nothing else. It's not to amuse anyone. Um, 
yeah, it's, it's what I talked about. Basically, you want people to focus on the headline because your headline is the tension grabber. It has your offer. It has uh, something about your product. It has everything in a headline. Headline is the most important part of an advertisement. So you don't want people to get distracted by the creative and not pay attention to your offer on the headline. The purpose of a copy is to tell the full story about your product or service after when you grab their attention, okay? So a lot of people create copies and they think that people got, everyone's gonna read them, but they're not gonna read them, right? And some people create copies so short that they are feeling smart that, you know, if you keep it short, people, everyone's going to read it, but that is not a purpose of a copy. A copy comes after a headline and a creative. So let's say as soon as you have someone's attention about your offer and they're interested, then you give them the copy, which could be as long as possible, as long as it gives the full story about your offer, about your product, about your feature, about everything. You give them every detail everything they are looking for in their head it needs to be in the copy so they can trust your product more so yeah as i said your prospects attention are gained by the headlines and creative and then the copy comes in to tell the full story specification data and everything about your product or service and then the last but not least is your call to action it can be saying call click buy email and they, they should be used in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end of your sales pitch, page, call, or whatever. You need to be clear what you look, what you're asking people to do. If you want someone to call you, let's say, somewhere close to your headline needs to be a button that says call now. So they know, okay, the whole purpose of this page is to call these people. It needs to be in the middle when they're reading the copy maybe they change their mind and they want to immediately call you. They need to be a button there. They need to be a button at the end of the copy um, for them to not waste time scrolling up. And that in that few seconds that they scroll up, they change their mind. You want to capture people at the start, at their state of mind, at their existing state of mind. Yeah. So it's like call to action is very direct. It says, buy it. It's worth every penny. I'm going to go back to the chat to see what's going on. Okay, so Pascal says, what is the best approach for products that clients will not traditionally buy online but will require physical presence to finalize, especially higher budget products like real estate, cars, jewelry, arts? Okay, so that is all about the funnel that you design, okay? If if the selling point of your product is not online and is in person, then your end result, your goal of your campaigns needs to be taking the people to meet you face to face. So that becomes your primary goal. As I said at the beginning, the only purpose of advertising is to sell. So you need to be tracking how much you sell and then bring it all the way back to compare it with the budget that you spend. But is to do that. So you need to design your top and middle and bottom of your funnel in a way that drags people to your shop or um, a meeting or a call, right? So your end result is not a purchase. End result is a call. And uh, yeah, I think that answers that question. So you, all of your offers and messaging and call to action changes when you have such a product that cannot be sold online. Okay, so you need to understand what the audience wants, um, how you can grab their attention and how you can bring them face to face. Um, no, welcome, well, welcome. <laughs> okay, let's go back to share screen. Again, reminder, if you wanna write on the chat, I will answer that later on. Testing, the last section I wanna talk about is testing and analytics. Um, test campaigns. <laughs> I cannot, uh, I can't believe that the majority of advertisers out there are missing this out. I mean, not the advanced advertisers, but rookie and intermediate advertisers, they skip this part and is the most important part of advertising is testing, right? 
almost every question that you have about your campaigns can be answered cheaply and quickly by test campaigns, by testing. So you create test campaigns to answer your questions. And I'll tell you what, why? Let's say, oh, let me show the other point as well because it's relatable. Um, testing is the only way to answer questions. Answers do not come from around the table. You cannot have a meeting with six people and find answers and make predictions about um, your, camp, your advertisement and how to spend your money. You need to be testing. So let's say um, a mistake that an advertiser can do is create a strategy, go big with it, and say, um, we're going to target this people like that, this people like that, boom, 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 create everything at the beginning, say we're going to put all of our budget on this campaigns and run it. And they run it and it does not work. And it kills either the company or the operation or the whole point of it. It just kills everything. It, it dies out. But a smart advertiser would do opposite, would say, okay, we make assumptions, we make hypotheses, right? We've got assumption one, two, three. So we turn these assumptions into one, two, campaign one, campaign two, campaign three. We test it with the market with a very small budget and a small audience and see which one works out. Takes it and does more. I'll show you how it works a little bit. So again, no one can predict the buying behaviors of your audience. Only data can tell you. Only data. It's... There, there are no gurus in our advertising world that can predict um, other people's buying behaviors, okay? So turn your assumption into test campaigns and test one variable at a time. Do not test five things because different result, you might not know what different results mean from which variable it came from, right? And um, what you want to do is you want to test your campaigns without any interference. So you say, I'm going to test these campaigns, three campaigns for seven days. You put them, you make them run, and you don't touch them until they're done because the, the clean, you need your data to be clean. You don't need any interference in your process to you know, dilute your data. And uh, you pick a winner from your round of testing, and then you do more testing if it's required. And... Another mistake people do it, like some people, some advertisers do testing at the beginning. And once they find the winner campaign, they never test again. The thing, is, the thing is markets change. People's ideas change, especially nowadays. People change every month, every season. Okay, so you need to be running testing forever. You need to be coming up with new assumptions, new hypothesis, new way of growing your campaigns and test and test and test. And yeah, it's like a laboratory. The best, <laughs> the best symbol, the best picture you can imagine for advertising unit is like a laboratory. That's what you do. So I give you an example right here. Um, we, let's say this is a little bit similar to what we do internally, but is very, is oversimplified this diagram. So you want to have your first testing round on the left and you want to find out which audience is the best to go with. Let's say if you have that skateboard product that we talked about before, your audience one is your surfers, your audience two is your new skaters, and then the audience three is your existing skaters. So you want to understand which of these audience are going to bring the most profit to you, okay? And you test the run, uh, you run a test, and at the bottom, you see, I wrote, repeat if ROI is less than 0 0.8. Okay, this is more of, this is, let's say, is not related to what Pascali's business, let's say, he, example he gave, because those campaign, those businesses and services are much more complicated to um, understand the ROI at the beginning. But let's say for e-commerce, let's, let's say for the skateboard product that we talked about, you want to run these. And you want to see if any of these audiences can give you at least 0 0.8 ROI, meaning that if you put $1,000 in advertising, it can give you a profit of $800. So just only $200 of loss, right? If it doesn't do that, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, around that number, then you need to pick other audiences. 
So all of the three audiences that you tested are wrong. You need to pick another three. Okay. And if you repeat that three times over and over again, and the ROI doesn't get higher than 0 0.7, 0 0.8, then you need to make serious changes either to your product. That's when you pivot. That's when you see that there is no market for what you're doing. You either pivot or you kill your operation and you move on. It's, it's a very dry decision. You cannot be emotional here. When you have three rounds of testing and the data says that the market doesn't want it, it doesn't want it. <laughs> so you got to deal with it. Um, then let's say if audience three in this diagram was the winner, um, was more than 0 0.8 ROI, then we go to the next round, which we test different offers. So how do we talk to that audience now? Before we made offers for each audience, correct. And when we move on, we create different offers for one audience. So now we're testing the offer, same concept. We repeat until we get ROI of one, meaning if we put $1,000, we get $1,000. So we don't, we make zero profit. Okay. Not negative, not positive or more than that. Okay. And if after three times of trying different offer, it doesn't work, then again, you need to, you know, make serious changes. Then you go test out the headlines, three headlines, five headlines. You compare them with each other, take the winner, go to the next stage. You do your creatives. You test your creative, you test different photos and images and videos and all that. You put them, you, you compare them with each other and you take the winner. And at the end, you scale. You just keep doing that forever and ever and ever. You, whenever you have enough hypothesis, you take it to a test campaign, you test it, you prove or um, disprove your hypothesis and you move on to the next stages. Um, Analytics. Whenever you do testing campaigns, you need to have analytics and tracking. Exactly like funnels that we talked about, you need to be tracking and analyzing what's happening at every part of your campaigns. You need to track and analyze correct metrics that matter, okay? A lot of advertisers track things that don't matter at all. Let's say... Um, I'm trying to find an example here. Let's say if your product, if you if you have an e-commerce, um, let's say the skateboard product, okay, a, a very a major ma matrix um, uh, metrics that you have to measure is the sales. A lot of people focus a lot on cost of add to cart, cost of how much people add to cart. Yes, it is important, but your focus should not be on that. Your focus should be how many people buy the product. Simple as that, okay? That is your correct metrics or how many people click on the ads. And what you have to do with the metrics and analytics and designing it and reading it and improving it is you have to put yourself as your prospect's in your prospect's shoes, you have to go through the interaction journey as exactly how your prospects goes through. And then at every stage of that interaction, you need to place a tracking device that can give you met metrics for that stage of the journey, okay? And then what you do, you take your metrics and you compare it with your industry standard to see, to understand every part of the journey, okay? A lot of, let's say, advertisers, they track two things maybe, right? They track purchases and clicks. What about all this journey in the middle of the, the prospect going through? Maybe they're not buying your product because your button is placed in the wrong place on your sales page. How can you know that? Metrics, analytics, tracking, okay? I give you an example down here. Um, is a journey that a customer tech takes for e-commerce business, okay? Let's say these black boxes are the journey. A prospect sees your social media ad, clicks. Prospect waits for your sales page to load. That is important as well. That is part of your customer's experience. They wait for your sales page, web page to load. The page loads. The next box says prospect views your sales page, goes through your sales page. There are different analytics there. I'm just simplifying here. It clicks on a button, 
prospect adds your product to the cart, then clicks, prospects, purchases, or buys your product, okay? So this is a very simplified um, prospect's journey in an e-commerce. And if you see at the bottom, there are metrics at, at every stage. Let's say when prospect sees your ads, you need to understand how much reach your ads has, how many impressions is your ad getting, how, how much frequency does your ads have? And there are different um, metrics for, mo for, uh, for, the, for the financial metrics. Let's say you've got the CPM cost per 1000 impressions, CPV cost per 1000 views or cost per views. Then you, then people click on it. You wanna understand how many people click on it. What is the click through rate percentage? How many people that saw your advert clicked on it? And then financially, you need to understand how much are you paying for these clicks, right? And on and on, you've got the page load time. When you go through your sales page, you've got content view, view duration, heat maps. When people add to cart, you need to track how many people add to cart. How much is the cost of customers adding to cart? When they initiate a checkout, how many of those people that added to cart actually initiated a checkout? And then how many of those people that initiated checkout purchased? If let's say um, you're losing 90% of your prospects at your checkout, when they initiated a checkout, they closed the page, then you can make assumptions. You can say either my checkout process is very complicated Either my price is too high that people are not willing to pay at the end. Either the payment methods that I have at my checkout are not trustable and on and on and on and on. So you know exactly if you know the, if you know the industry standards, um, your industry standards for all of these metrics, then you know exactly which part of your customer journey has a problem and you fix it and it's effective. So you always... Measure, measure, measure. <laughs> All right. So uh, actually, it's everything is done before the summary. I'm just going to stop the share to see what's happening in the chat. Uh, it's, it's almost done, Behrouz. It's almost done. Anyone that has questions, write it on chat. I will answer you definitely. So let's just quickly finish the presentations and go to Q&A. So summary, let's just quickly wrap up what we talked about. You need to have a purpose. The purpose is sales and conversion. At the end of everything is sales. You might have, you know, goals in the middle of your funnels and everything that is not sales, but at the end of every funnel is sales. Advertising are done to make sales, right? You need to understand your ROI. How much money are you putting in in general, in total, and how much money you're profiting at the end? And does that make sense uh, financially, right? Then you need to understand your fundamentals. You need to be just like a salesperson. You need to treat your campaigns like a salesperson. Simple, clear, relatable, convincing. Then you need to be specific, narrowed down, and relatable, as we talked about, about everything you do, your tone, your audience, or everything, the more specific you are, the better your advertisements are. Um, you need to care about what benefits your product gives to the customer and not the features. So you need to emphasize your ads on the benefits because people buy emotionally. For your strategies and offers, you need to know your audience so well and your funnel and design a funnel for your audience and break your audience down to micro audiences to create different offers. Use tracking and retargeting to pass these audience through the funnel. Create offers that relate to your audience, your micro audiences and your, the lingo that you use, this, the, the way, the tone of your uh, ads needs to match, your creative needs to match, the colors, right? The headline creative copy CTA, we talked about that. And the testing analytics, use test campaigns, definitely pivot and kill early. That is the purpose of testing campaigns is to understand what's happening when your product goes to market and then you make changes, 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 you run more testing, 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 changes, 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 and is, is two-way street. Your advertisement will change 
your product and service and how you conduct your service and how you make your product. And the way you make your product will change the uh, advertising techniques. And yeah, of course, use analytics on every step. What's next? Educate yourself. This topic that I talked about is just a surface of a much, much deeper concept in advertising. So read books and stuff. I'm going to suggest some books later on. Keep yourself updated. The advertising world changes every year. There are new approaches every year. So you always be updated. Try and experiment is the most, is the most important thing when advertising. You cannot be know-it-all advertiser you always try and experience even we do that in our agency track your process all the time and accept failures and learn do not emotionally attach to your campaigns let it fail if it needs to fail and learn from it so recommended books i have for you scientific advertising it talks about a lot of the fundamentals old school and new school fundamentals it's a very short nice book um then the No BS Guide to Direct Response Social Marketing, um, Social Media Marketing. This is your direct to consumer methods for your social, mark, uh, social media marketing and social media right now is so important. It's crazy right now that we've got elections in Cyprus for the parliament and nobody is using the social media power of advertising. It's crazy. Like I cannot believe that no one is touching social media for that. It's, it blows my mind. Um, and then one of my favorite books is it's called Never Split the Difference, Negotiating as if Your Life Depends on It by Chris Voss. He was an FBI agent before, and um, it teaches you how to negotiate. And negotiation is directly related of how you advertise. It's about convincing people about your ideas, your product, your services, and on and on and on. This is a really good book. Again, I am your presenter, Hesad Nani, chapter director of Startup Grind Cyprus. Here's my email. Here's my website. Um, contact me if you need anything. If you have any questions, feel free later on. Contact me. And thank you so much. Let's go back to, um, to the chat here. Okay. Okay, Tatiana, follow me from Congo. Nice. All right, let me bring that up here. So what did you guys think about the workshop? Write it on the chat. We exactly finished one hour and a half sharp. <laughs> Was it useful? Did, did I manage to teach something new? Did you learn something? Nice. If you have any questions, go ahead and write it in the chat. Um, would love to answer any questions you have. We give it another five, 10 minutes and we close. Behruz, what's, what's my take on what? Organic YouTube content marketing versus Pay that. Okay. So um, you need, both of them has, have different purposes on different part of your funnel. Okay. So when we're talking about organic YouTube content marketing, it can be used as two um, elements. One, it can be used as, um, let's say, your, your prospecting procedure, meaning that gathering a wider audience through the algorithm of YouTube to introduce them to a specific offer that you have. It can be used either for that or for your brand authority. So let's say if someone finds you somewhere else and then if they see that you have a YouTube channel, then that brings more authority to your brand. Paid ads is is very related to what we went through on this workshop because paid ads, as soon as you pay for an advertisement, there is a strategy. It does not relate to anything you've done before or any organic. However, you could be using your testimonials from your previous customers or pictures and all that, but not necessary. For paid ads, you can create it in a way that you can independently sell to people, right? 
And uh, yeah, just paid ads are used for that. Facebook, YouTube ads. Okay, for different channels, social media channels and online channels for advertising, they, again, they have different purposes and they have different audiences, okay? And they have different, they attract different um, type of audiences, okay? I give you an example between Google and Facebook and then I'll, I'll compare it with uh, YouTube ads. Um, on Facebook, if you really think about it, people that are on social medias in general, Facebook, Instagram, or whatever, it's on their time off. It's when they're lazy. Maybe they're chilling on their couch, legs in the air, hands in their pants, whatever. Okay. So that's when they use social medias is to waste time, to kill some time. Okay. So the way you design your ads when you're going for social medias is made for that is to capture attention and put ideas in their head once they don't know about it. So the leads that you get from social media are very cold leads, but there are many, there are a lot, okay? But for Google search, if someone goes on Google and search about holidays in Hawaii, they're already a warm or even a hot lead because they're looking for holidays in Hawaii. So if you have advertisement in Google search, then those are hot leads. You have to talk to them differently. So for social medias, you have to educate them, tell them, give a story, give benefits and what they are and what your product is. But for Google search, you got to get, get right to the chase, right to the point that you want vacation in Hawaii. This is the price. This is whatever. This is that buy right now. Okay. For YouTube, YouTube is a very interesting channel. It's hot warm and cold it can be all of them because some you can be targeting youtube videos that are related to your product so you can attract warm leads you can target those warm leads could be cold leads because your product let's say if they're watching a video about um let's say surfing let's go back to the example surfing and then you target them to sell skateboards they could be cold leads because they might hate skateboarding they could be warm leads because they might have thought about it or they might find it cool and they they might be in love with extreme sports or they could be hot leads which you know yesterday they were looking for skateboards so there's a very youtube is, is it it can give you everything it's it's a very different strategies that you use for youtube and personally i'm not a big um I don't, my knowledge is not a lot about YouTube. What we do is usually social media and Google search. Um, that's where our specialty is. Uh, so on YouTube or Google, can you target entrepreneurs with health issues? On Google, you can go that specific because you're talking about keywords. On YouTube, I would say you can target entrepreneurs and then just hope that they have you know, health issues. Um, Tatiana says, what better network to use for a good marketing plan? What do you mean what network to use for a good marketing plan? Um, what network, what better network to use for a good marketing plan? I don't understand your question. <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, um, there's no better or worse. As I mentioned before, it's just different purposes, okay? So if your product is simple enough that you can directly sell it to someone in five minutes, let's say if, uh, if your product is uh, yoga pants, as we talked about for women, um, there's not much purchasing um, decisions and purchasing doubt when buying yoga pants, you just have to like the design and convince and have come be convinced that it's comfortable. Okay. So you can target that through social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and all that. Okay. For YouTube, let's say um, you can go more specific. Let's say Behrouz can you sell um, courses about entrepreneurship, mental health on YouTube. Uh, but YouTube, one thing that you need to pay attention is that you're at 
your advertisement's video needs to be high quality because the content on YouTube is high quality already. So most probably the video that the guy was watching before seeing your ad was high quality. And then bam, it gets to your advertisement with bad quality. They get turned off right away. So YouTube, it, the, the reason why we don't focus a lot on it, they, you need to have a pro, professionally produced video ads for YouTube right? To be able to fit into that gap that you create, that YouTube creates to fit you in. Um, and for Google search, you can um, go very specific, very, very, very specific. Um, Hawaiian vacation tickets for people from Australia in Sydney. You can go as specific as that and Google will give you that result and give you those leads. But again, Google is very expensive. So let's say for that click, most probably Google will charge you around two or three dollars for one click to take to that page because you know the quality of the lead is hotter than social media. Social media, Facebook, Instagram, they're cheaper. Any other questions? Right, we're gonna close it up. Um, we're almost on time and uh, thank you for everyone to, for being here. And uh, I hope that you leave this workshop with a, a knowledge or two, new knowledge or two or two. And um, again, if you have any questions, contact me and hopefully I will see you on the next events of Startup Grind.